Okay, I'm back from that. Let us read a bit of Umineko. <clears throat> Wait, why is it on the capture but not on my screen? What the hell? There it is. That was strange. I clicked the wrong button. Do you see what? See what's happening? Do you see what's happening? He says. When like a very normal thing is happening, because I'm clicking things. All right, the final, the final. I guess technically this is the final stream before, but um, the uh, final half of a stream before I'm gone for quite some time, uh, live at least. So uh, the only thing I'll say before starting in uh, here is, may I hopefully not forget everything that's happened in the story after I don't play it for like a week. Or probably like a week and some change. May I uh, not be left confused when we return. Man, I had a... I had a... During the BRB, I quickly ate something. Just so I could get some food in my mouth. But now, unfortunately, some of it is like stuck in my teeth. Right before I gotta read a bunch, so... I kinda fucked up, didn't I? That's fine. Alright, I'm not even gonna recap what we did last night, because I just don't feel the, uh... Absolute need to. Um, we're gonna sit here, hopefully read for... I don't know, somewhere in between an hour and two? I'm gonna imagine. And hopefully something exciting happens. You know what? But... Thing is... If something exciting doesn't happen, then maybe that just ups the chance that next time when we come back, something exciting will happen, right? Although maybe someone could argue that maybe uh, something always is exciting happening in uh, Umineko. Wait, I'm getting a uh, notification on my phone that I must uh, check something real quick. Just gotta make sure of something. Hold your phones. Hold the phone. Hold my phone as I check. Okay, it's not important. Alright, here we go. She says... If you ask me as a woman, then while I'd like to be understanding a father's feelings of true love... Oh, basically... We, uh, I just said I didn't have to reca recap, but like... Basically... They all gathered in Kinzo's room, because they think this is the most safe place... Um, they're mostly in, like, survival mode at this point, where they're just, we gotta make it to the next day and hope no one else dies, because, obviously, people are dying at an alarming rate. Uh, then they come into this room, and it was basically, uh, basically revealed, I don't know if it was partially revealed before, or if this was, like, final confirmation, but basically, through Genji, Genji basically confirmed, like, yeah, he actually, like, loved... Beatrice to uh, a big, uh, uh, quite, uh, quite, uh, quite a lot, and he had spent so long trying to, like, bring her back, basically, was the whole thing, unless I'm really misremembering, which would be pretty bad, but basically, like, as Genji was recounting the story, he's like, He's like, yeah, he's devoted his life to all this black magic because he really wanted to bring her back, and he loved her, and because of this whole Ishiromiya family thing, that's why he had to be into a marriage, like, basically get arranged marriage, essentially, it, it, to the grandmother, uh, but the one he truly loved was Beatrice, um, and then I think Battler said something along the lines of, like, okay, so the, the... The servants being so into and believing of Beatrice as, like, still existing at this point wasn't because they actually technically believed in the whole black magic mumbo-jumbo type thing, but mostly because, um, 
out of like loyalty to Kinzo because Kinzo was so into it and wanted it to be true that they were like, well, to be loyal to Kinzo means to not essentially not believe like don't I can't disbelieve in this thing that he's pouring so much time and effort into because then I'm not showing loyalty to essentially my master, right? I think that's the best way I would describe it. So now that that's done, I will read this again. If you ask me as a woman, then while I'd like to be understanding a father's feelings of true love, it did leave mother in an awkward position. <laughs> I agree. Cheating is cheating. The, dude, Jessica spitting facts here. No way to make it pretty. Yeah, that's right. Gotta feel sorry for grandmother. So, have there been any rumors about a child between Beatrice and grandfather? The keyword Beatrice has been hidden in every corner of this case, so it's natural to suspect some relative of hers. No. I have not heard of anything like that. If there was one, a memento of his most beloved person, he surely would have given them all of his affection. Oh man, dude, I didn't even consider this as like a thing. I mean, technically really, again, unless I was to infer it earlier, we only really got confirmation that he was like really into Beatrice like that last uh, stream, so last night. Um, but I didn't even now consider until it's just now beaten over my head that what if one of these children to Kinzo were like an illegitimate child between him and Beatrice that would be interesting yeah could that be a plot point later what if there's a hidden fifth child so like not even connected necessarily here like we're seeing Hmm. Food for thought. Since he ended up immersing himself in black magic instead, maybe we should assume that there was no such child. Come to think of it, that reminds me of a rumor I heard. You know it, right? Oh, that would be the um the servant's house, right? Or that's where he got the servants from. If I'm remembering what was told to me correctly. Uh that, oh, I'm reading but um theorizing before I read the line. Shame on me. Uh that story about how grandfather heavily supported an orphanage called the Fukian House. Enough of that. That is nothing more than slander which would desecrate father. Tell us, Aunt Natsui. I think even you'd agree that this is no time to hide things from each other. It's a worthless story. Father made massive donations to an orphanage and had the orphans employed as servants at the head family to give them some on-the-job experience. The story in question is simply some drivel spread by fools who claim that father was using those orphans for some filthy hobby. For a while, some guys even said he was collecting human sacrifices for his black magic. Interesting. And 
and he really is doing weird experiments and ceremonies in this room all the time, so I half believed it myself. And those servants who come from the Fukain house are... There are several of them, but Shannon and Cannon were the two scheduled during the family conference shift. To resurrect Beatrice, he brought in servants from an orphanage as human sacrifices? After all, everyone Grandfather selected as a servant was young, about the same age as Shannon or Cannon-kun. I was sure it was because Grandfather had some bizarre hobby. Jessica! Jessica! Mind your words. When Aunt Osui scolded her, the atmosphere instantly went sour, and everyone fell quiet. However, something was tugging at the back of my mind. Sacrifices. Sacrifices. Human sacrifices brought over from an orphanage. What is it? Freaky words like sacrifices don't pop up often. And yet, I've seen or heard that word recently. Battler. Battler A, it's the voice inside your head. It's the epitaph. Some part of my memory is tugging at me. Hey, Beatrice, what do you know? <laughs> I'm just a painting battler. I'd arrived in front of the portrait of Beatrice. It wasn't as massive as the one in the entrance hall, but that portrait, which must have been drawn by some famous painter, was still just as intimidating in a smaller size. Below it, just like in the entrance hall, was the epitaph that supposedly hinted at the location of the hidden gold. Ah. Sacrifices. Here? What the hell, Battler? You're creeping me out. Six. Sacrifices. Ah. Both of my eyes were as wide as plates. Everything's been predicted right there from the sorry <laughs> from the very beginning. Oh, if only you could have seen my face trying to recreate that sound I just did. <laughs> Everyone crowded around, and the same expression of shock rose to all of our faces. That's right. It's right there in the epitaph. On the first twilight, offer the six chosen by the key as sacrifices. <gasps> Uh, uh, there's no doubt. Six people died in the beginning. And even on the shutter where the magic circle was drawn. No, where the Hebrew was written, it mentioned the offering of sacrifices. Uh. I've been saying that from the beginning. That's right. Maria said it right at the start. Right after we found the six bodies, when Maria was in the parlor watching TV, she said it. Ooh. The culprit isn't human. It's just the sacrifices chosen by the key. This has nothing to do with the location of the hidden gold. It's the instructions for a resurrection ceremony using black magic or something. After all, this epitaph requires a large number of deaths. It sure does. Even reading through it quickly, there'd be six plus two plus five. Thirteen people who must die. How many people are normally on this island? It, 
changes depending on the shifts or the servants, but there's father, my husband, Jessica, and me. And two or three servants. Today and yesterday, there were five of them, but there aren't normally that many. Which means that normally... There wouldn't be enough sacrifices to carry out this ceremony. No. No, wait. There's that rumor that Grandfather was collecting servants from an orphanage to be used as sacrifices at some creepy ceremony. So what does this mean? He increased the number of servants to increase the number of sacrifices and waited for the annual family conference when even more people would gather? Isn't now the only time of the year the ceremony could be held? When Jessica screamed this, Maria broke out in, this in that creepy laugh, looking truly pleased. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of people making bets to test their fate? Like throwing a sandal and saying that if it lands right side up, tomorrow will be sunny. Or saying that tomorrow will be a good day if a coin lands heads up. There are many little superstitions like that. Sometimes, when your luck is down you get bored and you roll the dice and get three sixes, you want to believe it's a potent of some miracle. A portent of some miracle. When flipping a sandal, you have at worst a 50% chance. Even if you get it right side up, it's not worth much. But if you carelessly roll three dice and they all come up sixed, you might think that's a small miracle. Magic works the same way. You must pray earnestly for an extremely unlikely result. Then, the feelings from all those stored up prayers gain magical power and become incarnate. The magic that Grandfather was trying to perform was probably like that. The key randomly selected sacrifices in a lottery. So, to reduce the chance that he himself was selected, he chose the day with the greatest number of people on the island to carry out the ceremony. Ridiculous. Are you saying that this entire situation was caused by a mere ceremony for some bizarre magic? Natsui yelled. She couldn't quite uh, she couldn't quell the fear that a scorpion charm might be the only reason she was still safe. Um, if I hadn't received that charm from Jessica and hung it from my doorknob, would I have been killed, mixed in along with those six? And the strangest part is, even though I hung the charm from the inside of my door, they couldn't get through that door. Culprit noticed the charm from outside the door and gave up trying to open it. A human couldn't have perceived that. A charm meant to stop something that was not human had done exactly that. Impossible. Impossible. Impossible! It's impossible! But, Natsui-san... The epitaph certainly does continue to fit, even after that. Uh, on the second twilight, those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. Could this be talking about Iwasama and Hideyoshi-sama? Painful as it may be, we must reach that conclusion. 
続く第三の番の言葉を手紙に書きその場に残したんだからね And after the culprit killed them, they left the words from the third twilight in a letter there. So, so that's right. After carrying out the second twilight, they left the third twilight in that place. The third twilight was just like Aunt Natsui just read. On the third twilight, those who remain shall praise my noble name. Ah, if you read it this way, it just keeps going on, doesn't it? On the fourth twilight, gouge the head and kill. Gouge the head and kill. George and Iki's parents were killed with those demons' ice picks gouged into their heads. But if they were the second twilight, someone else must have been gouged in the head. That's grandfather. He was burned in the incinerator, and our eyes were just so drawn to that part that we didn't notice. But his forehead. No, his head had been gouged. Dude, I'm such a fucking idiot. I honestly was sitting here thinking, like, these these Twilight things were happening. It was meant, like, some of these actions were going to be taken once a day. Like, every night or whatever. But no, it, it is. The, I mean, obviously, in canon was the other, uh, you know, the other ice pick. Uh, person. So it is rapidly happening. I'm so dumb that I didn't put that together. You know, I, me, as your trusty pilot here through this M uh, Umineko series here that I'm reading, and you, you just listening to my words being read here, I feel a certain responsibility to be somewhat, like, understanding of what's happening. Try to be as aware of the plot as I, as I guide and pilot you through this. I'm I'm bound to miss things every once in a while. Hey, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just a big old. Sometimes I can just be a big old dumb, you know. So for that, I apologize. It's gonna happen many more times this series. Don't worry. <laughs> Grandfather was the victim of the fourth twilight. The, then Kanon-kun was. On the fifth twilight, gouge the chest and kill. We thought Kanon-kun's case was an unexpected encounter with the culprit, but that's wrong. From the very beginning, they planned to lure someone out alone and drive something through their chest. If the culprit has followed the epitaph this far, does that mean three people still have to die? On the sixth twilight, gouge the stomach and kill. On the seventh twilight, gouge the knee and kill. On the eighth twilight, gouge the leg and kill. Yes. You could read it that way. Alright, let's place our bets then. What were the... What are the last ones? Stomach, knee, and leg. I'm gonna say... Stomach... Knee, leg. If those are to happen, right? If I look at the remaining characters, if it's three more, I, I think I maybe said this last night, but like these three stick out so much compared to like that. It just like if we're looking at how these are arranged, it makes sense to leave these these five then untouched. If we're gonna kill three more, right? Have one parent, and then have the four kids. You know what I mean? Like, to me, aesthetically, that m makes sense. So then, I'm saying, okay, these three. Stomach, knee, leg. Right? I'm gonna say Nanjo, stomach. Just an ice pick to the stomach, and he bleeds out. Knee, I'm gonna say Kumasawa, 
Only because she, especially in that last last night's stream of this game, uh, the last part if you're watching archived, uh, she colla her knees gave out like I think 27 times. So uh, if my count is accurate, so I'm pretty sure maybe that was like foreshadowing where she's gonna get an ice pick to the knee, and then I'm gonna say his leg, and he's gonna get taken out, and then it'll just be these five fools. <laughs> remaining because if we're actually if we're actually being smart about it right these are these these battler and maria seem untouchable in my eyes they're 100 percent they're not gonna die she seems too in, uh not interesting important to the plot battler i think is the main character or what we're supposed to be the the representation of us in the story right we're always usually getting mostly from his perspective so far unless they do like oh shit Spoilers, I guess, for Danganronpa V3, but what if they did, like, a chapter one, you know, reversal, oh, the main character dies, and then you take, then you play the rest of the game through, I don't fucking know, George perspective. Uh, and then the next layer is, like, these would be the next layer of, like, people that I think are untouchable. Not 100% like them, but next would be them. And then, and then Natsuhi... She I, she, I could see her dying. I could see her dying. And then, like, if we're only killing again exactly three, I could see Kumasawa dying, Nanjo dying, and Natsui dying. And then somehow Genji being uh, alive. Staying. Just because he seems like the calm, uh, steady head and could, like, as a character, progress. And it makes sense to me. What was the last line? Okay, yeah, that was her saying like, oh shit, someone's gonna die. Okay, well, I wonder about that. After those three die, it reaches the ninth twilight. Take a look. On the ninth twilight, the witch shall receive and none shall be left alive. We're all going to be killed by Beatrice. I don't get it. Wouldn't that mean everyone dies no matter how many people there are? What was Grandfather after? Doesn't this mean the ceremony would kill him too no matter what? It's okay if no one's left alive. On the tenth twilight, we finally arrive at the Golden Land. On the tenth twilight, at Journey's End, you shall attain to the power of the Golden Land's treasures once and for the last time. The witch shall praise the wise and bestow, bestow four treasures. Grandfather wasn't afraid of dying. Look at the second and third of the four treasures. One shall be the resurrection of all the dead souls. One shall be the resurrection of the love that was lost. So, Grandfather believed he would eventually be revived, even if he died partway through the ceremony? Ridiculous! That's insane! When you die, it's over, right? When you die in the game, you die, you die in real life! The dead don't come back to life. Isn't that a miracle humanity's been chasing after for thousands of years and still hasn't accomplished? So is this what it means? Something like, you'll be able to meet them in the afterlife where they'll be restored? If what you're saying now is right, would that mean that 
。おい先短いじいさまが。恋に狂っての自殺まがい。grandfather whose remaining life is slim and who's been driven mad by love is committing suicide。いや。壮大な無理心中ってことなのか。no。a massive forced group suicide。Genji. Is such a thing possible? Oh. Oh. Is such a thing possible? I don't know. The master is a man who sometimes has the wisdom to see a thousand years into the future. However, there are times when that appears to be nothing more than madness to commoners such as myself. Okay, should we take that for a yes? What do you say, Kumasawa san? <laughs> I, I, I don't know anything. That's right, I don't know. Do you think I would be on this island today if I did know? I would have faked an illness or done anything to take the day off. That's right. What about your opinion, Dr. Nanjo? You've been grandfather's friend for many years. I feel the same as Genji san. Kinzo san was a man who far surpassed ordinary people. I've even felt a sort of inhuman power from him at times. Even I. Don't know what Kinzo san was thinking when he wrote that epitaph. All we can say is that even if father did write this script, someone else is carrying it out. That's right. At the very least, there is another culprit who attacked Grandfather and Kenenkun. Furthermore, that person is still continuing the crimes, just as the epitaph says. The letter in the beginning that we didn't think deeply about. What was it that was written there? We thought back to the re、uh, recitation of the letter last night. Beatrice had proclaimed something inside it. She had proclaimed that, according to her contract with Kinzo, she would collect everything in the Ishirumiya family as interest. But then she had also revealed a special clause. If someone discovered the location of the gold grandfather had hidden, that right would be lost. When the letter was read, grandfather was still alive. But at that time, it had already been sealed with wax by the head's ring. Which meant grandfather had handed the ring over to Beatrice while he was still alive. If we take a straightforward approach, maybe we should assume Beatrice is carrying out this, that strange contract with grandfather guaranteeing her that right. In other words, this was the same as saying grandfather knew of and approved of the contents of that letter. In other words, it's basically a joint message from Beatrice and grandfather, telling us that Beatrice will start collecting interest if we don't solve the riddle. In other words, Grandfather and Beatrice were demanding that we try and solve the riddle of the epitaph. And if we couldn't, they were saying that the massacre would be carried out according to the epitaph. What does that mean? What do they want? I don't have a clue what it means. <laughs> Look, another letter from Beatrice. Huh? What did you say? Maria was pointing at the top of the table, where the canned food everyone had been eating just now still lay. A western envelope from Beatrice certainly was sitting there, but so what? 
What in the... And Atsui let out a hysterical cry, looking between her own hand and the table. Because the envelope she had just opened was still grasped in her hand. So why is there still an envelope on the table? Uh, what the hell? What's going on, Maria? Where did that envelope come from? Just now, I looked and it was lying there. Ugh. Uh, I don't know anything. Anything! Dude. Jikumasawa is not having a pleasant time tonight. She is She is very much of the mindset where she's just like, okay, if maybe if I stay ignorant, I'll just be left alone. <laughs> if I just say I don't know what's happening and I don't believe in anything, maybe I can just close my eyes... And all the problems will be gone by the time I come back. Uh, come back to, I don't know. Uh, this isn't funny. There's only the eight of us here. There's no way some ninth person snuck in. There was enough time during the few seconds that we gathered around the portrait, right? Oh no, another jump scare. Oh shit! Not a jump scare, but a final stand. Oh my god, there's lyrics in this track. The hell am I hearing? What the hell? I've entered a. Oh, we got an organ playing. Oh, shit. I I'll say it again. I've said it now many times, but I'll say it again. We, you get so used to and familiar with like the the looping, like normal tracks you get during the regular moment to moment story sections, that when it does like drop in like these like you more quote unique tracks, like it's such a it stands out that much more uh, in the, in the best of ways. All right, let's read. Continue. Uh, get back, all of you! Back against the wall! Aunt Natsui was pointing the rifle at Genji and the others, bellowing at them. She's had it. She's fucking lost it. She's like, I, I can't trust anyone at this point. Uh, Genji-san was overpowered, his face looking like he hadn't a clue what was going on. Of course, I felt the same, but a few moments late, I reached the same conclusion Aunt Natsui had. Until just a few seconds ago, there had been no letter like this on the table and nobody entered this room. That means someone among us placed it there during a few seconds when everyone was looking away, preoccupied with the portrait. Batlarkun, open that envelope and read what's inside. Uh, sure. I picked it up. It was still sealed with wax. Even without disturbing its contents, I realized that this was an as yet unopened envelope, an unknown envelope. Without relying on a paper knife, I tore it open and pulled out the letter inside. The contents were as follows. Is this a, is this Beatrice's voice? Are you enjoying the riddle of Kinzo-sama's epitaph? As you are all probably aware, you have very little time remaining. Please abandon any naive hopes of escaping after the storm passes. This game can only end with my victory or yours. When time runs out, I will win by default. 
There will be no ties. Make sure that you do not misunderstand your current situation. That's what it says. It isn't clear who put this letter there. However, I've been able to narrow down the list of suspects. It's you all! Ah. <laughs> uh, she really just hit them with the, uh, well, I've narrowed the suspects. It's everyone but me! Ah, <laughs> oh, good, uh, good job, good job. Oh, good job, Natsumi. Uh, alright. Madam. That's just too horrible. Just before I moved towards the portrait, I set a can of food down here. At that time, there definitely wasn't anything as strange as this letter there. And at that time, Jessica, George Kuhn, and Badler Kuhn were already in front of the portrait. And they didn't leave that spot in front of the portrait until the letter appeared. So the person who set that letter down is one of you four. Beatrice is here! Uh? We aren't Beatrice. Beatrice exists. Silence! I don't know whether I should suspect one of you or all of you. But without a doubt, at least one among you is the culprit. That's right. There can't be a 19th person. There's no way witches exist. Even when Kanukun was killed. Yeah, that could be explained if Kumasawa-san was the one who did it. The truth is, is that Kumasawa-san entered the boiler room with Kanukun and killed him. And then she lied, saying he had already fallen when she got there. You're making a mistake, my lady. Why would I do something like that? I don't have the slightest idea how my parents were killed in that closed room. But when they were killed, everyone except for the servants had an alibi. Only ones who didn't were the servants. But does that really mean it's okay to suspect them? Yes. Now that you mention it, they have no alibi for any of the cases. Ugh. Should we really be so quick to make that judgment? But this time, in this room, in this place, in this moment, in this minimally small bit of time and space, it's obvious. Only one of the four of them could have set the letter there in our blind spot. We can't tell who put it there, but it's obvious that one of the four did it. N Natsui-san! Please, calm yourself. A lot has happened today. I understand how much strain is on your mind right now. I know we maybe just uh, haven't gotten a chance to see what he says about it, and he's a naturally quiet person of the group, but like... The only we have it we have yet to hear and Genji deny that it was him yet. Just gotta point that out. Uh Dr. Nanjo, it truly pains me to call you suspicious. 
お父様の主人として唯一無二の親友として長くお父様と共にあられた However, you are father's personal doctor and his closest friend. You have been by his side for many years, and you might even know about Beatrice. Could you be hiding some kind of old obligation? Of course not. Calm yourself. It was pitiful to watch Dr. Nanjo frantically pleading his innocence. It was probably a normal reaction that anyone would give if they were suspected. Kumasawa was the same. Ever since Jessica voiced her suspicions of Kumasawa murdering Kanon, Kumasawa had been totally flustered. That was why Genji's still, cal Genji still calm appearance looked so bold. And Natsui pointed the barrel of the gun. Genji? Genji? You were grandfather's number one subordinate. Was, was Beatrice an illusion you showed to father, with you as a performer? If by If by suspecting me, you recognize me as the master's greatest servant? Then I count it as a great honor, regardless of the circumstances. However, I am not the one who put the letter there. Do you expect us to just accept that? You must be the ringleader. Maybe Kumasawa and Dr. Nanjo are your accomplices? And Maria Chan, too. <laughs> Not content to suspect just the adults, Aunt Natsui pointed the gun relentlessly at Maria, too. Fucking finally. But Maria acted as though nothing had happened. She's she's not. Look at this face. Unshakable. Unshakable. Or maybe she thought she would be fine if she was shot. Maria Chan. Maria -chan. By this point, we can no longer remove someone from suspicion just because they're young. So for the last time, let me ask a question that everyone's had since last night. Yesterday? <laughs> Yesterday? Who was the Beatrice who handed you that letter? Uh. Maria, don't dodge the question. Make it clear. Who gave you that letter? <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? It's Beatrice. The thousand year old golden witch. I feel like we're this close for this close to Natsui pulling the trigger on Maria. I feel like we are th so close. This, the, this, the, the, she, she has had enough. Natsui is going to pull the trigger and just take her out. If you want to know what she looks like, just turn around. Oh, what? She, see? She's right there. Beatrice is. Or is she talking about the painting? <laughs> she might be referencing the, the, the painting, not actually Beatrice. D don't mess with us, Maria! Enough, Jessica. Maria, two. <laughs> Don't you understand the situation? What are you hoping to gain by saying stuff like that? Stop stirring each other up pointlessly. I don't understand. Who do you all want the culprit to be? Why 
You only believe in Beatrice when you don't want to suspect one of your own. When you're trying to settle a grudge because someone who's close to you has been killed, only then do you want to believe in a human you can attack with violence and deny Beatrice. That's why you can't see her. Beatrice exists. You all can't see her. Silence! I don't want to label you as a culprit, but there's no longer any doubt that you enjoy making this situation unpleasant and are providing assistance to the enemy. That's what I've been saying this whole fucking time. Uh, laughs. Then what will you do? Shoot me? I don't mind. Very soon, the door of the Golden Land will be open. Then, all the dead will be resurrected. Right now, death is nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> Mom, she really is suspicious. We can't keep her with us. But, Aunt Natsui, please, calm down. There's no reason to shoot Maria. Please remain composed. The letter was meant to provoke us, but it's nothing to be afraid of. Even the culprit is scared of what will happen tomorrow. They're scared of the police. Bad chance. The culprit right there says, <laughs> Bet. Uh, they're scared of the police. Right now, this island is free from the reach of the law. But that's only because it's isolated by this typhoon. Once the typhoon passes, the law will return. So you mustn't shoot. How can you stay so calm, George Nissan? One of these four is the culprit. No, maybe all four of them are working together. How can you stay so calm when one of these four might be the culprit who killed your parents? Even I have the desire to find the culprit and kill them. But that would be simple barbarianism. Barbarism. Bar barbarism? Bar oh, it's not barbarianism. Unless that's just a typo? I don't know. Alright, I will leave the judgment of crimes to the law. So no matter how suspicious they are, you mustn't pull that trigger. Uh, I feel the same as George and Iki. Aunt Natsui? Get a hold of yourself for a second. <laughs> anyway, it'd be bad to shoot. <laughs> In times like the this, I hear you should tilt your head back and say stay cool three times. Let me make this clear. Witches don't exist. Not on Rokenjima. Not in the Ishiromiya Mansion. I declare it as Ishiromiya Natsui, representative of the Ishiromiya family. There's no witch here. I won't accept Beatrice. Why do I feel like this type of stand that she's making is going to result in some kind of trouble towards her uh, sooner rather than later? 
No matter what you're planning, I won't let you lay one finger on my daughter or the rest of them. That's my duty as a mother and as representative to the family. Those words were the final words of farewell that settled everything. To protect her daughter, Aunt Atsui would regard any suspicious person as an enemy. The only reason George and Iki and I were standing on the side was because, by coincidence, we had a clear alibi regarding the letter. If I hadn't approached the portrait, I would also be at the other end of that gun barrel, treated like a criminal. But even though part of me thought that, part of me was thinking that chasing all the suspicious people from this room would finally guarantee our safety. Genji-san and Kumasawa-san and Dr. Nanjo, all of them were on Grandfather's side. Maybe you could say that once Maria start started blindly believing in Beatrice, she was also on Grandfather's side. That's right, they're all suspicious. But is this really okay? If we throw out all the suspicious ones in such a lawless way, will we still have the right to defy the lawlessness of the witch? Everything's calm now. <laughs> I I expected another like, like a uh, jump scare esque moment there, and, and it just fades up from black. <laughs> and does the the grandfather clock ticking? And not so we didn't tell them to leave with her own words, but with wordless pressure, she induced them to stay say that themselves. Because if Doctor Nanjo didn't say those words, this cold silence would surely continue forever. Calm yourself, Natsui-san. Uh, Natsui Still, I understand your feelings well. I myself feel like there's something wrong with my head after all these strange, repeated incidents. So I understand well why you'd want us to suspect us. If you really have nothing to do with this, then my actions now would be beyond rude. However, please understand just this once. Very well. Let's leave the room. What do you say, Genji-san? Shall we return to the parlor and continue our chess game? If that is what you wish. Oh. <laughs> if that is what you wish, by all means. Uh, I don't want to. Okay, so I think Kumasawa is uh, thinking what I'm exactly about to say. Is that I think by casting these people outside of the quote safe room, I think we're essentially sealing their fate. I'm pretty sure Natsui is sealing their fate to be uh, attacked. Oh God! <laughs> so I would do the same thing if I was in Kumasawa's position right now. I'd be like, no, 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 no. I'd go. I would go out kicking and screaming as much as she could as an old lady. I would be like, nope. If the moment you send me out of this room, the because we've seen it now, it, everyone who's died has been like broken apart from like the main group, right? Anyone who gets separated from the majority of people ends up getting taken out. So, uh, I don't know. I would not be calm and just be like, well, there's nothing else we can do. Now, I think Nanjo and Genji, by extension, I think probably feels like this is their only option because they're not so he seems like she's means business when she's like i'm gonna just i'm gonna take you out if you don't leave so uh yeah that's a rough deal after all that means we'll have to leave this room knowing that the wolf is among us right I don't want to, madam. Please forgive me. 
It was obvious what Kumasawa-san was trying to say. If she was innocent, then she was being ejected into dangerous territory along with the culprit. Oh, it's just repeating what I had just said. In the current situation, urging her to leave this room along with the suspects was almost exactly the same as letting her get killed. However, Kumasawa-san really was suspicious just for being the first one to discover that Kanekun had been murdered. A raw deal. Um, at that time, everyone except Kumasawa-san had an alibi. Unless we could prove the existence of some contraption or the existence of some 19th person, Kumasawa-san was by far the most likely suspect. I didn't want to believe it. However, Aunt Asui and the rest of us were in such a difficult situation that we couldn't help suspecting her as, as well. So we didn't say anything to stop Aunt Asui from trying to oppressively chase them from the room. We had stopped her from shooting, but we were passively agreeing to chase the others out of the room. On top of that, Maria spoke to the fretful Kum uh, Kumasawa-san. It's okay. Beatrice is kind to those who respect her. You believe that Beatrice exists? So it'll definitely be okay. I'll watch TV in the parlor. Let's watch it together. It's so boring here without TV. Uh, laughs. It looked like Kumasawa found Maria's uh, roguish laugh very frightening. However, the three other people had agreed to leave the room. Kumasawa couldn't fight the flow and had to agree, crying as she went. Damn. Damn. Well then, Natsui-san. Uh, Natsui that will be all for tonight. Let us meet again tomorrow. That sounds more like a like a wish than it sounds like an actual thought. Like that sounds like, uh, well, I hope we make it to tomorrow night or tomorrow. Uh, you're just sending us out. Bye. <laughs> yes. Please understand, at least for tonight. Now, it kind of, this is, this almost reminds me, and this is funny now that I'm thinking about this. Remember, like, the old school, like, witch, actual witch trials? And this is, I, I'm funny because I'm bringing, it's funny because I'm bringing up witch trials in this thing, in this story that we're talking about witches. But, you know, the whole witch trial thing where, like, they would, you would always hear stories of, like, them, like, tying heavy weights to the ankles of suspected witches. And then you throw them into the water. And then, like, if they, if they were to survive that somehow magically, then the people that were, putting them on trial would be like well that's a witch right but if they didn't survive it then they're not a witch but they're obviously not going to survive that right if you sit, throw them into the water and then they sink right this is almost this is i i'm realizing that if natsui casts these people outside and then goes oh, let's just assume nothing bad happens for the rest of the night then there's probably going to be at least a part in natsui's head and maybe others in this room again quote safe room that they're gonna that not they see nothing bad happens and they go, ah. Oh, uh, I guess we did cast out the betrayer, someone that we did cast out was the bad person, and then that only raises the suspicion more. But if something bad were to happen to either the outside group or the inside group, well, if something bad were to happen to the outside group, then. <laughs> it's kind of like, well, they got fucked, but now we're wrong. But that's, she still technically was safe for the night. Whereas, if something happens to this inside group, well, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's fucked either way. But, um, you know what I'm so, uh, What I'm trying to say is, like, if my suspicions are correct that something bad happens to the outside group, then it doesn't really matter because they're kind of fucked one way or the other, is basically what I'm saying. They're either going to be highly suspected as being the bad person or associated with the Beatrice, or they're the ones who are going to get uh, eliminated. <laughs> uh, just an aside. When the police come, all of us will surely apologize for our rudeness. You may play chess, but do it in a safe place if you can. 
頼みます。Genji, I leave them in your hands. かしこまりました。Certainly. <laughs> しかたありませんね。It can't be helped, can it? こずらのクマが一番恐ろしいと言いますから。They always say that the most frightening bears are those with the children. Genji, Kumasawa, my sincere apologies. Let us meet again tomorrow. Maria chan, Maria chan too. Please,、oh, please forgive your cold aunt. Oh,、uh. I forgive you. Oh. <laughs> Madam, the keys to this room. I will hand both over to you. Genji san pulled two golden keys from his pocket and handed them to Aunt Natsui. Then, I will hand both over to you. I will hand both over to you. I will hand both over to you. I also hand over my bundle of keys to the inside of the mansion. He took out a bundle of about ten keys of various shapes and handed it over. To the servants, those keys were probably proof of their position. Being placed in charge of those keys meant that they were trusted, relied upon. When they were forced to return them, it meant that they had lost that trust. Thinking about it this way, to Genji san, who had worked here for a span of many years, there could be no greater shame. However, Genji san's usual and different expression remained. On his face. Genji. Genji. I was a little bit of 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 a little Makes me feel ashamed from the bottom of my heart. I have already received the master. I have already received the master's favor. Everything I have done until today has been in repayment for that. Please, do not worry over it. Well then, shall we, everyone? Good night to you all. Good night. Good night to you too, Badler. Maria. Uh, Maria. Wait a sec. Knowledge of guilt made me call Maria back. I groped around in my pocket and took out that scorpion keychain. <laughs> This repels magic, right? Wear it. Oh? Huh? Didn't you say you dropped it? Back then. I got ticked off and just bluffed that I'd lost it. There's no way I'd lose the precious charm you gave me.、Oh. Maria silently took the charm. I was unable to say anything after that. Well then. <laughs> God, Genji. Genji's always the person who speaks the slowest and also fakes me out with a lot of like. I mean, I don't know if he, he. He he takes a lot of pauses as well, I feel, with like natural punctuation and commas and stuff like that. So it always throws me off with him. Go back and watch the whole rest of the series up leading up to this point and see how many times each of the characters I've cut off accidentally when I thought that they've stopped talking. And you'd probably find that Genji is the most often. I'd be willing to bet quite a bit of money. Uh, Well then, everyone, good night to you. We watched them leave, our expressions completely worn out, and we weren't even able to respond.
until the door closed and we heard the auto lock, we were unable to breathe. Then, we were finally out to take a breath. After that, I noticed that Beatrice's letter, which I had been gripping the whole time and which was soaked with my sweat, actually had two sheets. Oh, the paper had been tightly stuck together, so I'd mistakenly thought that there was only one. There were no characters on the second sheet. The thing drawn there was a magic circle written with red ink like blood. Just like how every magic circle up until then had been dif different, this magic circle was one I'd never laid eyes on before. Inside the circle, a large triangle and a small triangle were fit together in a simple design. But just as before, there was writing in Hebrew, and it seemed clear that it held some kind of meaning. I wanted to know what that could be, but we had just chased Maria, the only person who could understand the meaning of magic circles, out of the room. Damn. <laughs> I thought of this magic circle as Beatrice's second message. What does this magic circle mean? Damn it. After chasing out all the suspicious people, all we had to do was stay barricaded here until morning, and everything would probably be over. Bet. Once the typhoon has passed, when the sequels cry, will everything be resolved? But the letter, which had unexpectedly appeared in the study, forced us to reject that naivety. It had made it very clear that, if time ran out, it would mean the witch's victory. When time runs out, is the witch planning to take on the offensive? This time, is she planning to display some fearful magical power? Maybe something that could have been used to kill six adults at once? Wait, when is time supposed to run out anyway? I don't know... anything. With this, we should finally be safe. Finally. Definitely. Damn, she is really trying to convince herself that that's the case. She's like, she's having to repeat it because she's like, uh, I probably still have some doubt. Even as she said that, Aunt Natsui couldn't stop gripping that rifle. There was no release in the tension of her expression. Of course, none of us felt like breathing a sigh of relief. At least, not until we could hear the cry of the sequels once more. Nice. Uh... Midnight? No, 11.30. Um... All right, well, damn. I know it was only about an hour of gameplay here for the stream, but as always, in the massive interest, even though I'm dying to know what's happening next here. Um, I'm dying, and it kills me that I'm going to be gone now for so long, and I can't, like, advance the story, obviously. Oh, my God, what if I... <laughs> I stream while I'm on vacation... If I get access, I'll um, I'll just do it like the really old way. I'll find like just a uh, like um, I'll find just a manuscript of the of Umineko, and I'll just pull out my phone and I'll just stream from my phone, um, from uh, from where I'm at, and I'll just <laughs> you can just listen to me. I'll buy, like, a cheap little tripod-like thing for my phone while I'm there. And then just, just read. Um, yeah. We'll call it, we'll call it here. It's weird. Um, I've talked about it, well, not often. It's, it, the thing is, just because of how busy I am generally with, like, work and stuff, like, I don't usually take off that much time from work, like, especially, like, this long. Uh, especially going, seeing family and stuff. So, like, generally what that ends up meaning is that I don't usually take this long of a break from like streaming just in general so then when i do end up like coming back it always feels very weird and kind of to like even if it's just like a week or a week and a few days or whatever it always feels like a I gotta start back up and like regain what it feels like almost so uh like i said at the top of here hopefully when i come back i haven't just forgotten everything about umineko but uh there's always a chance that that's the case but I guess this is that's partly why I archive these streams, yeah. Um but yeah, this is this will do it for at least on the live streams, uh at least a solid week, maybe a, a week and some days um till I return. Um but 
obviously the streams in theory should be still coming out on a daily basis there on YouTube at this point. So I've banked enough. So that's at least something I was able to do. Um, I'll be back though. Like I said, I'll be back sometime in a week's time or so to read more Umin Echo, to play more Disco Elysium and all that other stuff. Um, I've got a game set up that I'm excited to get into as well once I come back, but that'll probably be once I finish um, Disco Elysium, or not really Disco Elysium, because I still feel like there's probably quite a bit of Disco Elysium, but um, at least the the current Naruto game I'm actually slowly, <laughs> extremely slow and go through. When I come back, I do want to hit that game hard and try to finish that up in a few more streams sooner rather than later. Um, just so that I could kind of clear it up. But, um, yeah, there's another game that I'm excited to kind of start in and kind of just goofily play, um, once I'm back. So there will be that, but of course more Umi Neko and stuff when I am back as well. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Have a nice, I usually say like, oh, have a nice rest of your day. Have a nice rest of your night or whatever. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, but obviously that's not going to be the case. Have a nice, have a nice seven to ten days here without me i'll be back and um yeah we'll uh we'll we'll do more when i'm back so uh until until then see you next stream